we confess our faith to one another through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the children to come forward for the children's message. <clears throat> How are you doing, guys? You know, when I was your age, maybe a little older, a little younger, somewhere in there, we, we liked, my, 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 my parents, we owned a 10-acre field. It wasn't a huge field like some of you might own, but we didn't farm or anything like that. We just owned a few, you know, pets and stuff like that. But one of the things we liked to do is play hide-and-seek in the dark. Ever played hide-and-seek in the dark where your parents even let you do that? Okay. And I would always find really the best hiding places. I don't know why, but I was always good at hiding. So my friends would be running around looking for me, looking for me. They can't find me anywhere. And to help them out a little bit, you know what I would do? I'd say, hello, I'm over here, just real quick, when I know they're too far away to actually kind of catch where the voice sound is coming from. And they'd look around. They, 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 know, they know I'm around somewhere, but they don't know where. They can't see me, right? And I'd sight out again, hello, I'm over here, or, or whatever. And finally, after a few times, they'd find me, right? And then they'd beat me up because I made their life miserable as they were looking for me, right? And then I would do the same to them when they did it to me. Well, this is kind of what's going on in our gospel reading today. The disciples are out. They're out on a boat. You ever been on a boat? You ever fished? You ever fished with a net? Ah, I don't think so. You fish with a fishing pole, right? Yeah. Well, they're on a boat, and as, hap as what happens with most of us when we fish, what's going on? What are they catching? Nothing, right? How many of you have been fishing for a day and nothing, nothing hooked? Pretty much me all the time. That's how I fish. I'm not a, I'm not a good fisherman. And then they hear a voice. It gets to be early in the morning, and they hear a voice from the shore. They're only maybe 100 yards off, and they hear a voice from the shore saying, Children, have you caught any fish? But they don't know who it is, right? It's sort of like, over here, they don't know who it is. And they say, No, I haven't caught anything. They just think it's maybe another fisherman out there or something, right? Somebody fishing from the shore. And then this, this strange request. Well, throw your nets in on the right side of the boat. Strange request. Have you ever... Have you ever <laughs> caught fish just because you went from one side of the boat to the other? Has that worked? It doesn't work for me. I don't know why. I, it doesn't work for me at all. <laughs> so this, the voice says, throw the net on the right side of the boat, right? So if you're throwing the net on the left side of the boat and nothing's coming up, what would you assume would happen if you throw the net on the right side of the boat? Well, maybe, but not 153 of them, because it's not like the fish are like hanging around over here and not over here. But they throw the net in, and guess what happens? They catch so many fish that the nets almost tear. Right? Big fish, too. These aren't little fish. These are big fish. They're probably bass, by the way. That's what they fish for in the Sea of Galilee. It's a type of bass. They get it aboard, and guess what happens? The disciples know who it is on the shore. And who is it on the shore? It's Jesus, right? And Jesus can do that. And he, he can do things. He can make fish go into the nets, right? And they recognize who he is. They recognize him because of what happened. Well, do you believe that Jesus is here with us now? He is. Now, we may not see him, right? He may not be walking around in the aisles saying, hello, everybody. But we know he's here. How do we know he's here? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? Well, because he, we hear him. How do we hear Jesus? We hear him when the word of God is 
read, like when Derek came up and read the, the, old, the uh, first reading and the second reading today, when I went up and read the gospel, guess who's really speaking? Jesus, right? Jesus is called the Word become flesh. This is his word. He's the one doing the speaking. And you're, gonna, you're about to hear it in the sermon. I might, I might be saying the words, but it's Jesus' words. It's him doing the speaking, right? So we hear him. We may not see him, but we hear him. And when you get to be a little older, guess where else you get to, you get to see Jesus? Right there, in the Lord's Supper. When you get a little older, you'll get to receive the Lord's Supper. And then you get Jesus in a completely different way. All right? So look forward to that. Jesus is here, and we can take comfort in that because we never have to be afraid. Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for remaining in our presence, for being here both in word and sacrament. Continue to encourage us and give us faith that in all things and in all life we may seek you and please you so that in the end we may be brought into eternal life with you. We ask this in your name. Amen. Go ahead. Don't, now, be careful with the candle here, though, okay? So all of you stay down there while he gets the suckers so you don't knock that candle over. And as he's getting the suckers, we continue with our sermon hymn.